Hey guys, Mohan Popper here and in today's video I'm going to talk to you about all the risks when buying businesses. There are tons of risks that you can have when buying businesses, especially the type of businesses that we're talking about in this channel. I'm talking businesses doing usually about half a million a year in sales or at least the businesses we're looking into right now are doing at least a million a year in sales. There's lots of risks that can be involved if you don't know the exact things to, to be aware of. So I want to make sure you're not making those mistakes. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoy it. Let's get to it. And overall, if you want to hear more about those type of content, um, all this channel is mostly about buying businesses, how to buy them and have someone else run those businesses for us so we can build a portfolio of those businesses and how you can do that even if you have not, don't have much money or experience. So subscribe, I promise you won't regret it and yeah, hit the notification button to, to make sure you know and, and don't miss my, my future videos. So to begin with, I just want to make sure you understand there's risk in everything you're doing any type of business and generally anything in life. I mean, there's a, a risk with living, you know, you can die any day. We all are going to die eventually. So you need to understand, hey, this is part of life. Life is pretty much taking the risk. And this is what makes life interesting, the ups and downs. And I try to see my life as kind of like, just assume your life, kind of look at your life from a perspective of being involved in a movie. You don't want your life to be just up or down. A cool movie is a movie that has lots of ups and downs. So just enjoy the process, enjoy the ride and understand that, hey, this is life. That's what you came here for. So you're going to have risk. You're going to have failures. You're going to have some successes as well if you're going to continue in your path. So just make sure you enjoy it. And, and yeah, take, take every, every minute and moment in your experience. And, and experience is something that is it's just something towards your purpose eventually so just try to enjoy it as much as possible so few main risks that can be involved in buying businesses first of all obviously if you put your money there's a risk to that money if you put investors money there's a risk to that money if you are using banks capital obviously there's a risk there you can also have some kind of risk when you're signing personal guarantees obviously if something happens to the business then there is a risk there as well um, I mean, just any business in general, you can buy a business and then two weeks later you can use your main client. And I know businesses that have their main client is basically 20 or I even saw a business having like one client is like 50% of their revenues. So if you lose that client, you pretty much lose a big chunk of your business. So all those little risks can be involved in transaction. You just need to know, I guess, understand them and be aware of them. So like, like the... The thing I just said about losing the main client, just by understanding that there's a risk like that, when you look into a business, just make sure, hey, when you're doing your due diligence, try to understand and figure out what percentage an existing client make of the overall revenue. So if an existing client is worth 50% of the overall revenue of the business, maybe you need to change your valuation and I guess make a better assumption on what you're gonna offer on that business. So all those little different things eventually sums up to you figuring out if you want to buy that business and if you do you need to be aware of those risks and even present them to the seller and tell them hey look this is one of the risks this is the second risk this is why i think we should change the value on your business just because i'm going to put a lot of risk on mine as well if it's with my money my time my investors money and time and obviously guarantees that i might need to sign in order to, to buy your business now obviously if this is the first time you looking to do a deal then you probably don't have as much experience or just in general in business so you need to come from an understanding, hey, I need someone around me to help me because if you don't know anything about that business and you're gonna lose revenue, so yes, you can buy that business with no money, but then what happens? I mean, obviously after you buy the business, that's when your real work starts. So you need to understand, hey, I'm gonna buy the business, but you also need to figure out from in advance, I guess, what are you gonna do after you buy that business? What are your plans in order to make sure that revenue isn't declining? And same goes with customers. You need to think with yourself, hey, I have main customers in the business. Yeah, some of them are really main customers that might, um, I guess, be part of or responsible for a large chunk of the revenue. So you need to, as soon as you buy the business or even during due diligence, you need to figure out with yourself what kind of things can I do to make sure that existing really uh, good client for me isn't going to go for the competitor. So maybe I can offer him some more value. Maybe I can give him an extra bonus or an extra product for free or service. So all those things are things you need to think in advance before you even go into that business, before you even buy them. So when you buy them, you know, hey, here are the risks I had. And at the same time, those risks can be from the other side, good opportunities to grow. So those bonuses, those offers for the specific clients can be also an extra sale for your business. Another risk you need to be aware of is 
I guess technology nowadays everything changed so fast so if you go into something a business that got technology involved you need to be aware of the market like what happens if the technology is going to change how are you going to make sure that you're in front of the market when that something like that happens one more even more important thing is cash flow so obviously probably the most important thing in a business is to, to have enough cash like the main reason the business shut down is because they don't have enough cash flow or working capital to, to work with and pay um, salaries for employees so you need to understand, hey, here's the number I need for working capital to make sure I can run the business for at least a few months. So even if the worst scenario happened, I can at least sustain myself for a few months to get back on track. Another thing you need to be aware of is, at least for what we're doing in the business, we have people running those businesses for us, general managers. So you need to understand and think with yourself, what happens if worst case scenario happened with the general manager? Can I have someone replacing as soon as possible? And just overall, something you need to think about is as soon as you go into a business, you always want to make sure you're not dependent on just one employee. So if you have a general manager, try to think, hey, who I can train or I guess get involved so you can replace him as soon as something can happen. So yeah, overall, when you buy a business and when you, I guess, involved in any ex successful business, especially in the seven, seven figure numbers, Lots of things can happen, but what, that's what makes it cool, you know, that's what makes life interesting, that's what makes it cool. And in my opinion, with business, that's what makes things really exciting because you, as much as there are risks, and obviously if you, if you look at a business the right way, there shouldn't be much risk, especially from the fact that, just to give you an example, the businesses that we're looking into, I mean, those businesses sometimes exist for 10, 20 years and grow steadily at like 5% a year, mostly by word of mouth. So the chances of them going down somehow uh, the chances are really small if you know what you're doing but at the same time if you know if you have good business fundamentals you could grow those businesses really fast I'm talking two three times a year and that way I mean there, there's nowhere as far as I know a place where you can grow an asset so fast so rapidly and get back so much cash flow obviously now with crypto and stuff like that you see crazy numbers but it's not like steady good businesses that are existing for many, many years and you can really rely on and get existing or, or sustainable cash flow every month. So like I said, one of the best ways to mitigate your risk is to find businesses that already existing for many, many years, already have track record, existing list of clients that is very, uh, so, so one client isn't worth more than like 20% of the revenue. And when you have such a business that you have a huge list of clients, every client, even if you lose them, it's just a small percentage of revenues. And just combine that with the fact that the business is existing for many, many years, grew very slowly. So you're not dependent on specific, I guess, marketing. Uh, so, you know, so for example, there are businesses who depend on just like one marketing source or one advertising source. And you, as long as you're not dependent just on that, that's awesome. I mean, a business that's growing just by word of mouth for 10, 20 years, that's amazing. You can just introduce, if you're going to put in some more, more working capital into a new advertising spaces, that's awesome because you can grow really fast. But you know that you have that fundamentals, the good product, the good people, the good process that you, go, you grow steadily at like 5% a year, no matter what happens, no matter where you're going to put your advertising money at. So as long as you do that, as long as you go for companies that used to grow really slow and you just go in there and... I guess buy them, you can pretty much expect that same amount of cash flow. And I mean, yeah, like I said, there are risks. You can shut down, I guess, next day, maybe your product is just not relevant anymore or something happens. I mean, you can never know what happens in, in life, you know. But if you compare those risks with buying existing company that's already existing for many, many years, compare it to like starting a startup, starting a business from scratch with like a new idea, especially in the technology space, I mean, the risks are just the, the difference is huge. Just just look at the stats out there. More startups fail. Like 90, I think 9% of the businesses are going to fail within the first five years. And those who succeed in the first five years, at least 90% or so of them will fail in their first 10 years. So it's like, no matter what kind of idea you have or what kind of marketing you're getting yourself into, the risk in startup are just so much higher compared to going into existing business. It's already sustainable, already exists for many, many time, long, long time. And it's it just, in my opinion, much, much better opportunity just for the fact that you already have good business fundamentals. You already have many times a general manager to run the business for you so you can have also a better lifestyle. And in the end of the day, your time commitment and capital commitment 
is much higher in a startup in my opinion plus in a startup if you go out there and raise capital eventually you need to work with a boss yes when you buy businesses you can raise capital as well but you decide on the rules on which capital you take and in what kind of terms so if i'm looking to buy a business and i don't have enough capital of my own or from banks or other financial institutions and i need to have other partners who bring in equity partners equity capital if i don't like them i just don't bring them in like it's my rules i'm deciding if i want to do those deals or not and it's not like when you have a startup and you're raising capital from venture capital firms or or even angel investors are pretty much becoming your boss which at least personally i'm not looking to have a boss anymore and hey remember if you like this content subscribe comment hit the notification button make sure you're not missing videos because i'm going to make tons of awesome new videos just like this in the future just think about for one second all the risks that you have when starting a startup first of all you need to think of a product to even understand if that product's going to sell in that specific market so you need to go out there develop a product a new product most likely or a new service from completely scratch that's one then you need to i guess find out who's your client and find out how to deliver that product to your client and that process alone like literally finding the right client for a new business and finding out the exact best process to sell to that client that alone can take you so much time and so much capital like i've seen people who who are trying to start a business for literally months or even years but they just can't find the right place or uh, i guess yeah just right um platform to sell to their client and they're just wasting so much time testing while they're just spending working capital that i mean maybe they didn't find the right uh, i guess place to sell to that uh, customer for, uh, yet or just their product isn't worth it the problem with startup it takes you so long to figure out the exact place and that that many times the reason why startups fail they just didn't find the right place to sell to their right customer obviously they might maybe a different person could figure it out but they're specifically just didn't find out the right process and that can destroy you as a startup as a startup you need to hire employees many times yes you can start on your own but if you if you actually scaling just a little bit you can do things on your own i mean i don't care how productive are you or how much hustle you put into you yes maybe you can put it uh, two people work or like let's say you can do three people three people work but in the end of the day you need to hire people you need to trust people in order to scale and that's another skill that you need to learn just the process of hiring people it's not easy if you never did it before to figure out if you can really trust a person just from a few meetings with him um, and again compared to existing business many times they already have an hr department that's only responsibility is to find good people and obviously if the business is existing for 10 20 years it means that they already have good people compare that to learning a new skill of hiring people i mean that's a completely new level level of things so what i really like about buying existing business is just that the fundamentals of if the business is good or not are already proven you already know hey there's existing business we have the fundamentals right we know what's going on there and you can just build things from there with existing business the product is already established the sales process is already established the monthly cash flow many many times already proven sustainable and lots of those businesses that we're looking into the revenues is a recurring revenue so they have contracts with those clients for many times a full year in advance that they know every month how much capital is going to come in how much cash is going to come in so if you're buying a business like that you can just put your focus on finding new opportunities to scale really fast and that's why i think even if you have an idea for startup just take those ideas and bring them into existing business because first of all you already have capital to play with and test things and if you have crazy ideas just test them every month with a little amount of budget that you i guess decide to put into and then even if you fail you're still good because you have the fundamentals of good monthly cash flow coming in now what i hear from the other side is that some people just tell me hey you know what i think it's still too risky to just own a business um i, I agree with you startup is risky but buying a business is also really risky and some of you might say and i, I got those emails hey i, I just seriously I'm, I'm listening to all of those things i just rather have a job i'll i'll get my pay every month my income every month and eventually i just earn more money and i'm here to tell you hey there are tons of risks in that space too so to begin with your division might shut down i mean even if you're working as an employee for even big firms like 
I mean, just look at the, the news out there. There are a ton of companies who just shut down for some reason, or even if they don't shut down and something happened with the business, many times they just need to fire many, many employees. And that's part of business, you know, sometimes if something happened to the business, the first, pe- the first thing that gonna go out is some of the people that are not really necessary to bring in cash to the business. And that can be you. And your career, yeah, like people think that if they're gonna get a job, they'll get a raise every month or every year, sorry. And even that is not true. I mean, your position can be hold for whatever policy that the, biz- that, that the business decided to have, that the, your job place decided to have. So there are tons of risks there as well. I mean, there are risks, like I said, everywhere in life. But in, even if you have a good job, there are risks there as well. And in my opinion, I just don't want to have a boss. So just the fact that you don't have that freedom, professional freedom and just lifestyle freedom is not worth it for me as well. Also, just the fact that you have someone who's pretty much responsible to move you whenever he wants. So if he decides, hey, I think you can be better there or there, he can literally remove your job like in a day. Say, tell you, hey, I think you can do a better job there. And you can't really say anything about that. I don't remember where I heard it once, but it's like something that says, I like to be the only person who can fire me. I don't want to have anyone who has responsibility to fire me. And that's why, uh, for me, just working for someone else isn't isn't even in the lexicon. When you run a business, when you own a business, you're pretty much responsible for all the decisions. And as much as it's fun and good, it's, I guess I just want to give you the other perspective. It means also all the responsibility on you. So when you have a job, yes, you can work a few hours a day, nine to five, and then you can go home and forget about it. When you run a business, there's no such things. Even if you don't run the day to day, you are still there with your mind 24 seven. So that's something you really need to understand before you get into this space, because if you can't be really involved and fully committed into something, it's going to be really difficult for you because everything is on you. And I think in life in general, you got to take responsibility for everything. And if you're not someone who's willing to take responsibility, um, owning a business might, might not be the best things for you. I think to summarize this video, there are risks everywhere. I think you should focus on your day to day. You need to figure out what's the day to day that I will enjoy being part of and just focus on that. And if you'll focus on making sure every day is good, eventually your life will be good in general. So don't be like, Hey, I'll work in that job or I'll buy this business. So eventually I'll be happy in like a few years. Try to find a way to be happy today with the process of what you're doing every day. And then your future is going to look good as well. For me personally, just about, I rather do something I love and fail in it every single day than doing something I hate and repeat it for many, many years. In my opinion, it, it's just not worth it. Life is, life is too short. So yeah, to finish this video, I think there, I read somewhere that is less than 10% of people who work for someone actually like their job. So if you're working for someone, I think running a business is definitely going to be, uh, first of all, just the opportunities are going to be much higher. The, the fun, it just, just look at the fun. The reason that I really like the space is the, the fact that you can be involved in so many different se- sectors, uh, be around so many good people and learn so much every day and at the same time really give and contribute and help employees, help save jobs, help increase salaries and just help people in general, even help business owners who are looking to retire and don't have this good opportunity and you can give them that opportunity to retire, to sell their business while you take care of their baby, their business. So in my opinion, that's, that's the best option out there. The fact that you can own a business or many, many businesses have someone else run them for you and just grow in general as a person and learn about so many different places. And for me personally, I enjoy the day to day. That's why I think it's the, the coolest business to be part of. And that's what I want for you. I want you to get to a point where you enjoy your day to day. Not I, I see so many people who just suffer every day and just always think about their future because they think in the future something's going to be better. But if you want something will be better in the future, you're going to change it today. So that's what I want for you. I want you to really get to a point that you understand, hey, it's possible. And if you think owning the business is for you, I think definitely, I mean, subscribe to the channel, comment, let me know what you think, because this, what this channel is about. I didn't see any channel about this topic, about the fact that you can buy businesses, existing businesses with existing management team in place and just be the person who's responsible for the the vision of the company and just taking the biggest decisions versus being involved in the day-to-day menial tasks. I think this is the best business for people who just like to be um, involved with people, who just like people, 
uh, people. I, I guess if, if that's even good in English, I'm not even sure. But if you like to be involved with people, like to talk to people, like to listen to people and learn about their story, what they're doing, I think this is amazing business and I really want you to be part of it. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. Subscribe again if you didn't yet and let me know in the comments below what you think. I'd love to hear your feedback. I'm getting awesome emails from you guys. We're growing really uh, in, in a steady phase with this channel. So definitely share it with your friends. If, they, if there's any friend that you want to own a business with, share this channel with him and I'd love to, to get involved and build some, some kind of a community of people who want to own businesses and eventually we can just help each other and have cross-selling opportunities and sy synergies between businesses and just win-win for everyone. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it. I'll, I'll see you soon.